Good morning, Bethel's family. It's good to see y'all in the house this morning. Why don't you go ahead and stand to your feet and join us in our praise and worship. We want you to join in this song. It says, God reigns. How many in here, God reigns in your life? Over every circumstance, it doesn't matter. And he gives us chance after chance after chance. Who wouldn't serve a God like that?
¿Están escuchándome? Amén, amén. Amén. For some of you who may not know, this is Pastor Pablo Monroy. Por los que no sabían, ese es el Pastor Pablo Monroy. And for over a year now, we've been preaching every Tuesday outside on top of that stage as the people are coming through. Casi un año hemos estado predicando la palabra de Dios juntos acá en nuestra en nuestra en nuestra uh, en nuestra distribución de comida de este lado. And we started a Spanish ministry here at Bethel's family. I'm sure that some of you do not know. Si usted sabía, hemos empezado un ministerio en español en este lugar. And it's been one year today since the Spanish ministry was Y el día de hoy estamos cumpliendo un año para la gloria de Dios. Never ever ever say what God can't do if we're just faithful and obedient. Nunca nunca hemos dicho que Dios es no es suficiente para hacer todas las cosas y él ha sido más que fiel. So right where you are. Entonces donde tú estás. If you're able to please stand. Le voy a por favor de pedir que se ponga de pie. And let's bow and go before the throne of grace. Y vamos a elevar una oración delante del trono del Señor. Most gracious God, our Father. Padre celestial. We thank you for all that you do and all that you are. Queremos agradecerte por todo lo que has hecho, lo que haces y lo que harás. For God, it's because of you that we can do all that we do. Porque todo lo que hacemos, Señor, gira alrededor de ti. And without you, we can do nothing of significance. Y Señor, y nada podríamos hacer sin tu ayuda. So Father, we're coming this morning thanking you. Señor, venimos esta mañana agradecidos contigo. Thanking you for one year of service for us. Gracias, Señor, por un año que nos estás dando en el servicio visto en español en este lugar. Thanking you for 29 years of service for Bethel's family. Gracias por 29 años que servimos aquí en la familia Bethel. Thanking you for the imprint and the fingerprint that Bethel's family has not only left on this community but on Texas and in Louisiana. Señor, y te damos gracias porque estamos dejando una huella, señor ministerial, no solamente acá en esta área, sino también en Luisiana. Not just in Louisiana and Texas, but all around the world and even in this nation too. Oh, no solamente aquí en Luisiana y en Texas, sino en todo el mundo, Señor. So God, we thank you for what you've done. Señor, gracias por lo que estás haciendo. God, we praise you for what you're doing. Señor, te alabamos por lo que haces. And God, we're going to worship you as we wait to see what you have yet to do. Y Señor, te adoramos y te bendecimos por lo que harás. So God, today as we celebrate y el día de hoy vamos a celebrar a new life in Christ. Nueva vida en Cristo. We just ask now, Father, that you would guide us. Y nosotros pedimos que tú nos ayudes y nos guíes. That you would keep us, Father. Que nos, eh, nos proteja, Señor. Keep our minds stayed Pro on you. Protege nuestra mente enfocada en ti, Señor. As we merge and we become one church. Y porque estamos, eh, Señor, complacidos y contentos que somos una iglesia. Let everyone keep their minds on kingdom work. Y todo lo hacemos, Señor, al alrededor de tu reino. Kingdom business. El negocio de tu reino. And the coming king, Jesus Christ. Oh, cuando venga el rey de la gloria, nuestro Señor Jesucristo. So God, we love you this morning. Señor, te damos gracias y te amamos esta mañana. We bless you this morning. Te bendecimos esta mañana. And we thank you. This y te damos gracias, Señor. It's in Jesus. Name. Es en el nombre de Jesús. And all who agree with Y todos decimos fold. tres amen. cosas. Amén. 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 And amen. Y amén. Come on, give God Vamos, 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 denle la gloria al Señor. Oh, but we're just now getting oh, started. Oh, vamos, vamos. We're just now getting started. We've got my vamos a empezar. Mosley. Tenemos una una linda uh, señorita acá que se llama Mosley. Dre, how are you, dear? ¿Cómo estás? Dre is 11 years old. Come Tiene on, 11 añitos, no lo ves. Denle un aplauso al señor. Dre, you believe that Jesus Christ hung on the cross and died for your sins? Mijita, tú tú crees que Jesucristo murió en la cruz del Calvario por ti? And on the third day he rose from the dead. Y al tercer día él resucitó. Y él viene otra vez para ti como iglesia. My dear sister, by your public profession of faith. Hermanita, estás profesando la, la, la comunión y la fe públicamente. Right Levanta tu mano. Y, si levantes su mano, vamos a bautizarla. I now baptize you in the name of Yo te bautizo en el nombre del Padre. In the name of the, en el nombre del Hijo. In the name of the, y en el nombre del Espíritu Santo. Aleluya. Welcome to the family of faith. Bienvenida a la familia del Señor. Te bendiga. Man. And mom and dad are standing here with both of their cameras rolling. La mamá y el papá están muy felices. We got young brother Del. Aquí Mosley. está otro hermanito. Él va a venir aquí a la bautizarse. Del, how are you, my man? ¿Cómo estás? 
Delvin's 10 years old. Dice que tiene 10 años. Uh, Delvin, you believe that Jesus Christ hung on the cross and died for your sins? ¿Tú crees en Jesucristo como el Señor de tu vida? Amen. And that he rose again on the third day. Y él resucitó el tercer día conforme a la escritura. And he's coming again one day for you and me as church. Y él viene otra vez por ti como iglesia. My brother, by your public profession of faith. Si estás profesando esta fe, as you would. Vamos a levantar esta mano. Yo, yo te bautizo en el nombre del Padre, nombre del Hijo y en el nombre del Espíritu Santo. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. God is good. Dios es bueno. Now, family, what we're, what you're about to witness here. Okay, lo que estamos haciendo, somos testigos acá de lo que está haciendo. The fact that God moves. Dios se está moviendo. If you're just faithful. Si nosotros somos fieles. We've got 12 members of la familia Betel. Nosotros tenemos dos hermanos que vamos a bautizar de la iglesia familia Betel. Amén. We're getting baptized today. Ellos se van a bautizar ahorita. The Holy Spirit is working. El Espíritu Santo está acá. Come on, dear. Vente, mamá. Ven. Come on, we got you. Come on. Despacito. Come on, it's not cold. Despacio. Despacio. You could have had to be baptized Despacio. in the river. Tú quisieras. <laughs> Él dice que quisieras bautizarte en el río, pero eso está mejor. O en el. Vamos a de este lado. Ok. Muy bien. Yeah. Ay, sí. ¿Cómo se llama? How are you? What's your name? Vilma Abigail Campos. Say that for me, Vilma Abigail Campos is, is her name. Sister Vilma. Vilma. The sister, you believe that Jesus Christ hung on the cross? ¿Tú uh, uh, crees que Cristo murió por ti en la cruz del Calvario? Sí. And died for your sins. Y Él murió por tus pecados. Sí. And on the Amen. third day, He rose from the dead. Y al tercer día, Él resucitó. Sí. Amen. And he's coming back again one day. Y Él viene otra church. vez por ti y por todos los aqueos que hemos recibido a Cristo. Well, sister, by your public profession of faith, Entonces estás Lord, confesando que tú eres hija del Señor y te vamos a bautizar in the name of the, en el nombre del Padre, in the name of the, en el nombre del Hijo, in the name of the, del Espíritu Santo. Carlita, Carla. Carla. Ah, Alejandra, Alejandra. Alejandra? Alejandra. Sí. Alejandra? Alejandra, she is 12 years old. You believe that Jesus Christ hung on the cross and died for you? ¿Crees en Jesús que él murió en la cruz del Calvario por ti? Okay. Hallelujah. She said yes. <laughs> I'm not, you guys, Pablo been doing ministry since he was 16. He's not 16 anymore. And I've known him for about 15 years now. So the, our, our, our little dynamic here is okay. And you believe that he rose again on the third day? Yes. And that he's coming back again one day from the U.S. church. My sister, by your public profession of faith, family of you would, I now baptize you in the name of the... Padre, in the name of the... Hijo, in the name of the... El Espíritu Santo. Hallelujah. Ah, mamá, Dios te bendiga, ¿ok? Amén. God is good. Come on. Come Dios on, es bueno, Dios es bueno. Vamos a darle un fuerte aplauso a Cristo. Let's go to class. Okay. Name, okay, mamá. Chaley. Chaley. Her name is Chaley. Chaley, and how old is she? 15. Chaley understands me too, yes. Pablo. Yes, yes. We're good. Go ahead. It's yours. <laughs> Chaley, you believe that Jesus Christ hung on the cross and died for your sins? Amen. And on the third day, he rose from the dead. Amen. And he's coming back again one day for you and me as church. Thank you, Jesus. My sister, by your public profession of faith, family, if you would, I now baptize you in the name of the... Father. In the name of the... Son. In the name of the... Holy Spirit. Welcome to the family of faith. Bienvenida a la familia de la fe. Shelly, te bendiga. Amen. Ahí despacito. Lucero? Lucero. Okay, I helped you. I helped you. Okay. Okay, her name is Lucero. Lucero, you believe that Jesus Christ hung on the cross and died for your sins. ¿Crees tú que Jesús murió en la cruz del Calvario por ti? And on the third day he rose from the dead. Al tercer día resucitó por ti. And that he's coming back again one day for you and me. Y él viene otra vez por ti y por todos los que hemos recibido en su corazón. My sister, by your public profession of faith, estás haciendo la profesión de fe. I now baptize you in the name of the. Yo te bautizo en el nombre del Padre, en el nombre del Hijo y del Espíritu Santo. Hallelujah. God is tremendously 
tremendously, as they used to say in the old church, hippopotamously also. Dios ha hecho tremendas cosas yes. en medio nuestro. Esta es María, Marita. Okay, Hello, María. Do you believe that Jesus Christ hung on the cross and okay. died for your sins? ¿Tú eh, crees que Jesús murió en la cruz del Calvario por ti? Al tercer día, Él resucitó. Él viene por ti como una iglesia. Con tu profesión de fe, vamos a bautizarte en el nombre del Padre, en el nombre del Hijo y del Espíritu Santo. Esta Marita, te amo, ¿eh? I love you. Okay. Pablo told me he didn't want to get anyone me to do them all. <laughs> Sometimes I, I work for Pablo. It's my guy. I tell you no much much time. So I, vamos a hablar aquí. Cuidado, mamá. Cuidado. Despacito, despacito. Okay. And what's your name? Tu nombre? Clay. 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 So you believe that Jesus Christ hung on the cross. Tú crees, tú crees en Jesucristo como tu Señor y Salvador personal. And on the third day, He rose from the dead. Al tercer día, él resucitó. And that He's coming back again one day. Y él viene por ti como iglesia del Señor. My sister, by your public profession. Ahora públicamente estás confesando, estás haciendo tu acto de fe. Te vamos a dar el nombre del Padre, nombre del Hijo y del Espíritu Santo. Tu manita. Hallelujah. Okay, mamá. Dios te bendiga. Amen. God bless you. Come on, dear. Yeah, we got, we, we got a few more, y'all. We got a few more. Y'all stretch them legs out. Come on, Amen. come on. Come on, vamos, vamos, vamos. God is amazing. Dios es maravilloso. When you okay. think and you're standing out there on that stage when it's windy and it's raining, you're just talking about Jesus and folks just come. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's a blessing. Esa es una bendición de lo que estamos sucediendo y lo que está sucediendo en este momento. Her name is Carla. Carla. See, you believe that Jesus Christ hung on the cross and died for your sins. Tú crees que Jesús murió por ti en la cruz del calvario por tus pecados. And on the third day he rose from the dead. Y al tercer día el Señor lo levantó. And then he's coming back again one day for you. Y él viene nuevamente como una iglesia a recogerte también. ¿Lo crees? My sister, by your public profession of faith. Estás confesando esto en el nombre del Padre, en el nombre del Hijo y el Espíritu Santo. En el nombre del Hijo y el Espíritu Santo. Hallelujah. Se no tiene usted. Dios está moviendo de una manera extraordinaria en nuestro medio, en nuestra iglesia. So today we present, you know, the mother and her daughter. But we started, you know, with her mother right now. Mama. Okay. Su nombre completo. Oh, yes. she wants to be in there yes. with her? Yes. Come on, yes. baby. Come on, baby. It's, it's mama and daughter. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. Stand right here, baby. Stand aquí, mama. Quédate aquí con el pastor. Aquí. Quédate aquí. Un poquito. Dale, dale una, 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 una. Aquí, mira. Aquí, quédate aquí. Ahí. Okay. Coge el pastor. Ahí quédate. My sister, you believe that Jesus Christ hung on the cross and died for your sins. Mm -hmm. Hermana, ¿tú crees que Jesús murió por ti en la cruz del Calvario, por tus pecados? Y al tercer día, Él, el Señor lo levantó de los muertos. Y Él viene otra vez a recoger a la iglesia como tú. Ahora, haciendo la profesión de fe públicamente, te bautizo en el nombre del Padre, en el nombre del Hijo, en el nombre del Espíritu Santo. Igual te vamos a hacer aquí, ¿ok? Hermanos. Dice, Dios se mueve a través de todas las cosas en familia. Hace para acá, dice. The big man. Edwin. Edwin? Sí, su nombre es Edwin. Her, uh, his name is Edwin. Okay. You believe that Jesus Christ hung on the cross and died for your sins. ¿Crees que Jesús murió por ti en la cruz del Calvario por tus pecados? And you believe on the third day he rose from the dead. ¿Crees que el Señor lo levantó entre los muertos al tercer día? And you believe he's coming back again one day for you and me, his church. ¿Crees que un día vendrá otra vez por nosotros como iglesia para llevarnos con él? Entonces públicamente te estás diciendo, te voy a bautizar en el nombre del Padre, en el nombre del Hijo, en el nombre del Espíritu Santo. Okay. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless you, man. Ma che mamma. Next. Ora si passa per ese lado. It's for you. Now, do you believe that Jesus hung on the cross and died for your sins? ¿Crees tú que Jesús murió en la cruz del Calvario por ti, por tus pecados? Y al tercer día, el Señor resucitó. ¿sí? Y Él viene otra vez por su iglesia tal como tú eres. ¿Lo crees? ¿Sí? Bueno, vamos a orar. Vamos a, lo estás diciendo públicamente. Has hecho tu profesión de fe. Y yo te bautizo en el nombre del Padre, en el nombre del Hijo, en el Espíritu Santo. Agarra aire. Hallelujah. The whole family. Toda la familia. Man, this preaches all by itself. Renzo. Renzo. This is my brother Renzo. Renzo, you believe that Jesus Christ hung on the cross and died for your sins. Tú crees que Jesús murió por ti y por tus pecados en la cruz del Calvario. And on the third day he rose from the dead. Al tercer día él resucitó. And that he's coming back again one day. Y él ha prometido venir otra vez por su iglesia tal como tú eres. My brother, by the public, your Entonces, public tú estás haciendo la profesión de fe. Yo te bautizo the en el nombre the, del Padre, the, del Hijo, the, del Espíritu Santo. Te bendiga, papá. Muchas Welcome to the family of faith. Bienvenidos a la familia de la fe. Amén. His name is Tomás. We have one, uh, two, two more. Two more. Unless there's some more Tomas. out there. Come on. Tomás from Cuba. Tomás still rolling. God bless you, brother. Okay. Okay. Tomás, yes. you believe that Jesus Christ hung on the cross. Tú crees que Jesús murió por tus pecados en la cruz. for your sins. Murió por tus pecados en la cruz del Calvario. And he rose from the dead on the third day. Y él lo resucitó al tercer día. And that he's coming back one day for you. Y él ha prometido church. regresar por ti y por mí como iglesia que somos. ¿Lo crees? Amen. My brother, by your public profession of faith. Públicamente estás profesando. Te vamos, estamos a bautizar en, the, en el nombre del the Padre, the, en, el nombre del the, Hijo, the, en el nombre del Hijo, en el nombre del Espíritu Santo. Amén. ¿Todo bien? Felicidades, te bendiga Tomás. Amén. Ok, the last one, his name is Miguel. Miguel. Michael, Miguel, the Spanish. He's from Colombia. But he is from heaven right now. Yes, the permanent residence is now in heaven. La residencia está en el cielo, dice. Miguel, ¿crees que Jesús murió en la cruz del Calvario por ti? And on the third day he rose from the dead, Al tercer día fue resucitado. He's coming back again one day. Él ha prometido you volver church. otra vez como iglesia que tú eres. My brother, by your public profession, Entonces públicamente estás profesando. Yo te bautizo en el nombre del Padre, en el nombre del Hijo, en el nombre del Espíritu Santo. Hallelujah, welcome to the family of faith. Now let me tell you something. Okay, déjame decirte familia. If we don't celebrate anything else today, si nosotros no celebramos, dice todo esto, vamos a, a celebrar las almas que están viniendo a los pies de Cristo. And the signification of that is the baptism. Let's give God some praise. Vamos a darle gloria y honra al Señor. The blood still works. Amen. God bless you. I am soaked. You bless the Lord, oh my soul.
want you to stand up this morning, amen? How many of you out there know that he's all right? I mean, you really know that he's all right. Has he ever come through for you? Has he ever done anything for you? Well, then I need you to stand up and give testimony this morning. Because he's all right. Did you know that? Come on now.
can wash away my sins. Nothing but the blood. Let me say that one more time. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Church, let's go ahead and make some noise for Jesus. What a blessing. Let's thank God for the visit of the Holy Spirit in worship today. Thank God for our choir. Thank God for these musicians, these ushers, these greeters, those who just happen to be in the house today. And to all of our visitors, we thank God for each and every one of you who are in the house today. Family, we have to continue to pray for all families. We want to lift up the Marks family to you. Uh, Donna and Greg Marks uh, this morning got word that their daughter, Melanie, has passed. And nobody is exempt. There are other families who've been impacted with some level of death, sickness, I was blessed to be in Abbeville yesterday. There were several funerals going on in the city. But I was blessed to attend uh, Deacon Minor Wright uh, about a month and a half, two months ago. We had actually celebrated his 102 birthday. And so he went home to be with the Lord. So we celebrated his life on yesterday. And that's a blessing. But I want to focus on the Marks family because if you can just imagine on a Sunday morning getting a phone call and now you have to deal with the grief on a Sunday morning of your baby girl not being here anymore. And so if you don't mind, would you bow with us and let's pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we just say thank you, Lord. Thank you, God, for your hand of mercy and grace over all of our lives. God, you've been so kind. You've been so merciful. God, you do things, God, not according to our will, but your perfect will. So, Father, we pray in the name of Jesus, God, that you would touch all grieving families, all the moms and dads and grandparents and uncles and aunties, God, and siblings, God, cousins, oh, God. Just touch right now, Lord, because you have the power, God, to heal and restore. You can mend the brokenhearted, God. We, we can't do anything on our own, God, but with you, God, all things are possible, Lord. So just cover right now, Lord. Those in hospitals and hospice care, God, cover right now, Lord. Please, Jesus. Please, Lord. Then, Father, would you speak to us today? As you continue, God, your journey with the body of Christ here at Bethel and all that you're doing in Harvest Point, God, that we would just focus in on being one, Lord. One in faith, one in spirit, God, one in mission, one in vision, God. And then we thank you for all visitors who are in the house along with the members. Bless every household represented, either in this room or online. Bless them right now, God. And we'll be ever so mindful and careful to return all praises, all glory, all honor unto you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And we say amen. amen. And amen. Family, while you're standing, we want to definitely do this. For all those who are visiting, just wave your hand. We just want to say thank you for being a part of our body today. For those who are visiting, thank you all so very much. Amen. I even see some people look like my kin folks out there. Lord have mercy. 
but thank all of you who are visiting today inside the program that you receive inside to the right. There's that little strip that says contact information. If you don't mind, please, ma'am, please, sir, put a name, phone number. Uh, and if any of those boxes are applicable to you, just check those boxes off and just tear that one portion off and during our offertorial time, just place it in the offertorial box. And before uh, 10 p.m. tonight, I will personally give you a call if it's for no other reason but to tell you thank you for being a part of our church family. Welcome to Bethel's family because you could have went to any church in town today. There's thousands of them. But thank you for dawning the doorsteps of this church. Amen. Family, our message today is entitled, We Are One in Jesus Christ. We are one. Our scripture coming from John chapter 17, beginning at verse number 20. Here is what your hearing and reading should be. Verse 20 said, Jesus says, I pray not only for these, but also for those who believe in me through their word. May they all be one as you, Father, are in me and I am in you. May they also be in us so that the world may believe you sent me. I have given them the glory you have given me so that they may be one as we are one. I am in them and they are in me so that they may be made completely one that the world may know you have sent me and have loved them as you have loved me. Verse 24 says, Father, I want those you have given to me to be with me where I am so that they will see my glory, which you have given me because you loved me before the world's foundation." Righteous Father, the world has not known you. However, I have known you and they have known that you sent me. I made your name known to them and will continue to make it known so that the love you have loved me with may be in them and I may be in them. Then Apostle Paul began to share in Ephesians chapter number 4, uh, very candidly here. He says this in verse number four, five, and six. He says candidly, he says, uh, there is only one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the hope, to one hope at your calling. Verse five says, there's one Lord, there's one faith, there's one baptism, there's one God, the Father of all, who is above all, and through all and in all. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers and hearers and doers of his powerful word. You may be seated. What a blessing. We'll officially say good morning to all of you and what a great morning it is. First Sunday in February. And uh, I tell you, this year is, is moving uh, good through uh, last month, passed quickly. February is on the move. But my brothers and sisters, why is it so important uh, that we focus in on oneness? Why is it so important that we focus in on oneness? You see, the moment you and I were born, uh, we had to deal with some level of divisions. We live in a, a world where people are divided on just about everything, on everything. And even in families, sometimes it's fathers and sons at odd with one another. Sometimes it's mothers and daughters. Even there are times when siblings began to rival against one another. Sometimes it's cousins. Sometimes you got aunties that's not even speaking. Folks that are connected to the family but won't come to the family reunion. And they're living in the same city where the reunion going to be. Then you got some folks that make it their business to keep the division going. They're always negative. There's never a positive word that comes from them. There's no spirit of unity. 
You, 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 and sometimes you get to the point where you know not to invite. If you want to have a good time and things to go peaceful, let's not invite them. You remember last time? Why does all of our gatherings have to end up in arguing, fussing, and fighting and confusion? Well, because family, Satan is the greatest of all the adversaries and he has not sidetracked himself from his mission. God has already told us that Satan's job is to kill, steal, and destroy. Destroy the oneness, the unity, the love, the koinonia, the fellowship. And that's why sometimes family is challenging just to be one. And then Satan comes in and want all of us to somehow independently feel more important than somebody else. Because I got a little this and y'all have a little that. I got a little more than you, so please don't talk to me. You know how it is when some people get, you know, three dollars? Y'all talk to me now. They were on 10 cent roll for the last 10 years, but they got three dollars now. That income tax have kicked in. So in the book of John, God deals with that because the heart of God has always been that his people be one. That his children be one. All through the book of John, from one chapter to the next. As a matter of fact, the first chapter of the book of John deals with God is here. He's not absent. He's not lost. God is here. The word became flesh to dwell among men. God is here among us. Chapter 2 come in and begin to teach us to learn more about Christ. His glory his zeal, his purpose, his mission. Chapter 3 tell you it's a matter of life and death. If you don't accept Christ Jesus as Lord and Savior, you won't have an eternal heaven to go to. And there's nothing between eternal heaven and eternal hell. It's either one or the other. Chapter 4 comes in and remind us that Jesus loved the Samaritans. He loved the one that was outcast, the one that wasn't counted, wasn't registered, didn't have the real blood of the Jewish lineage, but Jesus loved Samaritan. He loved the Gentiles. Same love that God had for the Jews, he had for the Gentiles. Chapter 5, come in and tell you that Jesus and God are equal. They're one of the same. Chapter 6 begin to tell you how Jesus, when he was leading, he would feed the multitudes. Many would follow him, but they were following him for the wrong reason. They only wanted some fish and some bread. And when he challenged them in chapter 6, many of them left. Chapter 7, Jesus began to speak about the high level of disbelief in divisions in the body of Christ. Just like in our world that we're living in, who created all these denominations? And I'm not talking about money. I'm talking about all these churches, all these denominations, all these religious beliefs. Man did that. So man can feel important and big about himself. But according to the text, when I read, it's only one God, one faith, one baptism, it's only one heaven, it's only one savior. That's only one I am. Chapter 8 comes in and Jesus began to speak about the Mosaic law and God's amazing grace. You remember the woman that was caught in adultery? Based on the Mosaic law, it said we should stone her to death. But amazing grace shows up. And when Jesus told those Pharisees, any of you are without sin, why don't you go ahead and cast the first stone? And because hypocrisy, hypocrites were at the forefront, they had to drop their rocks. 
Jesus looked at the woman and says, no man accused you. She said, no man, Lord. And Jesus says, neither do I. Go and sin no more. Chapter 9 come in of John and Jesus began to perform more miracles because the miracles were his earthly credentials. When people want to know, how do we know he come from God? He turned water into wine. How do you know he come from God? Heal the sick and raise the dead. How do you know you came, came from God? He walked on water. How do you know he came from God? He told the lightning, the thunder, and the waves, peace, be still. It happened. His miracles are his credentials. Chapter 10 come in and he tell you that he is the good shepherd who lay his life down for the sheep. He knows the sheep voice and he comes and he ministers, he take care. He's not an evil, a wicked shepherd. He's the good shepherd. Love you before you even love yourself. Chapter 11 tell you about his last miracle when he raised Lazarus from the grave. Still performing and sharing in his power. Chapter 12, Jesus speak about man-made crisis. Most of the crisis that we're in, we made them. You ever dug your own home and couldn't get out of it? Then you say, help me, Jesus. Make it plain, Pastor. You, you know, you went into the crack house yourself. Lord, let me leave that alone. Chapter 13, it speaks about Jesus, speaks about his sovereign servanthood. He was all human, all God, but yet he had a high capacity for humility. A high capacity of holiness. And when people truly embraced him, totally happiness was experienced. Chapter 14 comes on the scene and he began to tell those who are grieving and going through the loss of loved ones. He said, listen, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, but I go to prepare a place for you. So where I am, there you shall also be. He also promised them that the, the comforter would come. The Holy Ghost would come and give them what they need when you're going through trials and tribulations. Chapter 15, Jesus began to speak about the relationship and the responsibility of those in the pen. We all have responsibilities because we're in a relationship. Come on now, say amen. Any husband and wife that's in a relationship and they don't have no responsibilities, that relationship is not gonna last. Somebody ought to say amen. Lord have mercy, no matter how much the love and how much the love and the love and the love and the love and the love, 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 if there's no responsibilities, there'll be no relationship. So we have a responsibility to yearn after God's word, to live in his word, to execute his word, to be convicted by his word. We have a responsibility to be committed to the cause of Christ. Chapter 16 come in and Jesus speaks about that the world gonna hate you. But heaven will love you. Because sometimes, family, we get confused about why nobody loves me. You're in the world. The world is not geared to love you. The, Lord, the, the world is a great big vacuum cleaner. It, it, it takes all of your strength, take all of your peace. It takes your joy away from you. Nothing but a great big vacuum. The world hates you. But heaven has loved you. We get down to our text, and I'm almost done. In chapter 17, then Jesus began to say, this is the greatest of all the prayers in history. Chapter 17 is the prayers that Jesus prayed. First and foremost, he prays for himself. First five, six verses, he's communing with God and he says, praying, Father, listen, you and I are tight. Now, can you imagine being in the atmosphere of hearing the Savior pray to the Father and that prayer is so powerful because it's genuine, it's unique, it's specific because Jesus knew what he had to go through just to get us through. 
Second half of the prayers, he's praying for his current disciples, James, John, Peter, Bartholomew, Matthew, and all of those. He was praying for them that God would keep them and sanctify them by the truth and hold on to them and protect them from the evil one. He says, listen, Father, everything you gave me, I gave to them. They are now yours because they were mine. Make them one. I want them to be one. I want them to be one. I want them to be with me. I want them to be one. How will the world know that you and I love Jesus and we follow him if we're not one? That doesn't mean work. That mean persistent. That mean consistency. That mean you put the devil where he's supposed to be behind you. Come on now, say amen. Don't invite him to your parties. Don't invite him to the situation. So you got to watch yourself. And then he prays for you and I. He prays for you and I, your parents, your parents, 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 parents. He prayed for all of them before any of them were born. So when you get in the corner and say, well, nobody prayed for me. That's a bona fide lie. But look at what Jesus prayed for. We need to look at it again, if you don't mind. In John chapter number 17, I want to just refresh your memory. Here's what Jesus says. He says, listen, in verse number 20, I pray not only for these, but also for those who will believe in me through their word. May they all be one, as the Father and I are in me and I am in you. May they also be in us so that the world may believe that you sent me. Lord have mercy. Jesus goes on to say and say, listen Father, I want those you have given to me to be with me where I am so they can see my glory. And he says, which I already had before the foundation of the world existed. Jesus also says, listen, I, I want them to be completely one. I want them to also not only make my name known but make your name known in the land in which they're living because I want them to be one one anyone that come up against the unity of God in the body of Christ is working for the antichrist when you're in the house of God and you're not working for the body, the unity of the body, you're working with the Antichrist. It's like parents. No parents want their children fighting. None. Not in their right mind. Now you got some parents that egg that stuff on. But that's not the heart of God and a great parent. You want your children to come and get along. You do, th do some things to help them get along. You remind them to get along. And so it's very important when we look at the body of Christ, when God looked down upon the earth, I can promise you he don't like what he see. Yes, we can wear the cross around our neck. And we can tote the biggest Bible in town. But if you're not seeking the body of Christ to come and be one, you're not working the ministry that God has called for the church to work. Now, you know, next Sunday, not this Sunday, but next Sunday, there will be this great big Super Bowl. It's going to be somewhere in Phoenix. They got the Kansas City Chiefs who wear red and the Philadelphia Eagles who wear green. Now next Sunday, they do have some Eagle fans in Texas. And Pastor Lee is the chief Philadelphia Eagle fan. You watch next Sunday. 
You're going to have green pants, green shirt, biggest green Bible, green socks, green hat. <laughs> but watch this. The Super Bowl is the biggest athletic event in America year in and year out. People will fly in from all over the world. So many of the airports have to shut down so the private jets can get in. You have Tyler Perry would be there. Even Lil Snoop would, would creep up in there. And Jay-Z and Beyonce going to make it in. You know, I mean, this is the who's who. They fly in their own little jets. They're going to all come in and everybody that's in there have chosen their team. So you're going to have a sea of green amongst a sea of red. And let's just say Mahomes, get that ball and throw it out there. Boom. His number one receiver, Kels, right? Touchdown. Everybody in red. Cutting up. Those in green. Nah. Huh? Philadelphia, get the ball. Quarterback, you say, I'm ready. <laughs> Touchdown. Now everybody in green. Woo! Pastor Lee cutting up, tearing his house up, jumping up and down, calling people. Everybody in red. Here's where I want you to go. At the event, you have people that have never talked to each other, do not know each other, but they got on a red shirt that says Kansas City Chiefs. They're going to be fellowshipping like their family. I wish I had a witness in here. They're going to be high fying each other, buying each other beer, buying... You want a hot dog? How many, you want a hot dog? How many y'all need? 17? I got them. Amen. They are fellowshipping together. And watch this. They have a rivalry against the green team. Come on, I say amen. Now, the green team, they've met together, too, people from around the world. They got Philadelphia Eagles. They're ready for a championship. They're all together. Now, watch this. The green will fight the red at a moment's notice. Come on now, say amen. They don't know each other. Amen. Haven't spoke to each other, but automatically, they're at war with each other because on the field, there's a battle going on. We have a battle going on between good and evil in the church. Come on now, say amen. You have God's people on one side and the devil's demon on that side. And I want to know, can God's people come together as one and kick the hell out of Satan? Is there anybody in here? When we go together, when we come together, when we fight together, when we pray together, we worship together, God said, I want you to be one because the enemy is out there. He don't want some of us. He wants all of us. So can you imagine if all of the Christians just in the city of Houston would just come together? Forget about denominationalism. Forget about all the affiliations of all the conventions, all the associations. Can the Christians just come together? Lord have mercy. Regardless of your creed, your culture, your background, just come together because of Christ. You know, you take your hand like this, and you know this hand, it does have a little power within itself. You got your fingers all apart. But when you take this same hand, and you begin to make a fist, come on now, say amen. When you put these fingers together and put that thumb to wrap around it, come on now, say amen. You, you know some of you know how to fight, come on now, say amen. Some, make a fist, come on in here, you know how you do it, come on now, say amen. Amen. When you make that fist, you ready to amen, duke it out. You ready to amen, hit your best punch. Why in the world a Christian can't come together and make a fist with Christians and say, where is that Satan at? Let's knock him out. Come on now, say amen. Let's not keep fighting each other because as long as we are apart, we will always be looking at each other, judging each other. Look at her hairstyle. Her weave don't even match. Look at them shoes, girl. His head been messed up. He went to a bad barber. Come on now, say amen. I know he didn't wear that suit. Lord have mercy. That's when you're apart, but when you come together. When you come together. When you come together. 
power from on high. The testimony of what God does is beyond belief. Can we allow the Lord to make us one? Just one. I'm going to ask my wife to come on up this way right quick. integrity in our family straight we've been very honest consistent and fair with this church we believe that there's power in our family to be an example of what family should be about no not perfect but faithful Somebody ought to say amen. amen. And I shared with you two and a half months ago that the body of Christ will have to plan on your new first family that would come behind us. Nobody stays forever. I shared with you in 2024 we will be passing the baton to another pastor and family to take the lead share. We're not going nowhere. We're still here serving in some capacity, but we don't need the weight and the responsibility of taking care of everything. That's for young people to do. And so we have four things that we have targeted over the next 12 months that we want to do. In the next 12 months, the Lord is going to work through what we're doing. But today, Harvest Point and Bethel's family, and you are a part of that, we are about to make history. Normally, when two churches merge, that means one church is sick and the other one is dying. But that's not the testimony of either church. Bethel's family is Jesus strong. Harvest Point is Holy Ghost strong. Lord have mercy. So you can't help but know that God is going to be doing some incredible things. So what you're witnessing, what you're a part of, is history. Allowing the church to be one. Can I introduce you to Dr. Pastor Lawrence Scott, his wife Shannon, and their six children? Come on down the aisle, Dr. Scott, Shannon, and your children. Y'all come on up this way. See, 29 years ago, when this church was started, but these two little people right here, two people that are most, the two most unlikely people of all the folks that would start a ministry, God used us. We made ourselves available. And in 29 years, we have one more year before the mantle is passed. 
But God is putting that oneness in our heart right now. And Ruby and I, along with our family, we are tremendously grateful. Not for some things, but for everything. And we truly thank God for each and every family and supporter of the church called Bethel's family. So give yourselves a hand. I married Dr. Lawrence Scott and his wife, Sister Shannon, 16 years ago or so, almost 18 years ago. And um, a blessing they serve, but I'm going to let Dr. Scott introduce his own family. Amen. Let's give him a hand. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Can we celebrate our pastor, August, first lady, Sister Ruby August? This is such a beautiful moment for me and my family. Uh, 18 years ago, almost 18 years ago, we were married at uh, the other building, Pastor August led us. And at that time, we were a part of different churches. And my mother-in-law said, listen, you need to come see my pastor. He's serious about marriage. If y'all want to get married and you want us to pay for it, at least their wedding, y'all need to come see him. So you know what we did. Amen. You got to get that coin. Amen. And I, I was so overwhelmed by his graciousness to walk through us through that. And as we were making transition in 2007, uh, we came and became members here at Bethel's family. I want to introduce my family. Shannon Scott, we've been married almost 18 years. Would you celebrate my wife for one second? If you don't mind. Uh, Kaylin, who is about to be 16, she got a driver's permit, everybody. Amen. Be on the lookout. We in these streets. Amen. Leah Scott, she's 14. Would you celebrate her? A third, Eden, she's 12. Our first boy, Lawrence, the third, he's 10. My brother with the bow tie, come on, Zachary, he's six. And the one who makes everything go, who runs the house, Reagan, is four. When we joined the church in 2007, I remember getting here and being overwhelmed by not only the service they gave us in our marriage, but just seeing the work that the Lord had was doing in Bethel's family. And my first ministry when I got here, and some of you would remember this if you were at the old building, was the chair ministry. Had so many folks in the building that every Sunday we would just put chairs down. Amen. See, you don't need stages to serve. Just be available. Amen. So we did the chair ministry, I was invited to do the business ministry, then the evangelism ministry, became a youth leader, and then the youth pastor, had a chance to be the director of Bethel's Family Christian Academy, and then became the executive pastor. So you just saw the Lord ordering steps, amen? And, and I want to say this, in 2013, when I shared with the pastor the, what the Lord was doing to plant the church, I don't want you to miss this. When I told him, he said, not only will we support you, he put a check in our hand, gave us chairs, speakers, walked with me as we found a location. But watch this. After we planted the church for the next 15 months, I was still receiving my full-time salary from Bethel's family. Listen, come on, somebody. Because he wanted to make sure that the family wasn't hurting as we were trying to build. And the reason why the church has flourished and the Lord allowed it to flourish was because of the seeds planted right here. So celebrate one more time. Come on, somebody. And, and finally, as we even think about the legacy campaign and where this church is going to pay off debt, it only makes sense uh, that we be fully on board with that. And so uh, for this first phase, uh, Harvest Point Fellowship Church is going to bring an offering of $75,000 and then another 25000 from the Scott family. Amen? To celebrate what God is doing in this house. What, what a blessing, family. And family, listen, Sister August and I, we love the Lord. But the ministry is bigger than one family. And I have never, please hear my heart, I've never in my lifetime been irresponsible. I was taking care of my little sisters. 
four of them as young as eight or nine years old. In every place I've ever worked, I left there and they still kept, let me keep the keys. When I left True Light Missionary Baptist Church, Pastor Lot did the same thing for me. I, could, I was still going back to True Light to teach the teachers. When I worked for LaSalle Partners Asset Management Company, I got to choose my own successor that took my spot. When I was on staff at Shoe Creek Baptist Church, I kept the keys to the facilities when I came here. I've never ever been irresponsible. And I'm surely not going to start with God's house. <clears throat> There's a video I need you to see. You just sit down momentarily for me. Can you turn it up a little bit?
in some form or format. And so that's one of the things we want to come to you on. There will be other Zoom trainings that I'm doing currently, and they're pretty much right now every other night there will be a schedule that will go out. You will get an email with several scheduled times. Please, ma'am, please, sir, click on to one of those Zooms. We normally do it between 8 p.m. and 9 p.m. nightly when they are available. I don't keep you over an hour, so I can go a little bit more in detail about the legacy that God has provided for our church. Now remember, the One Church 2023 Legacy Challenge is not for some of us, it's for all of us. And trust me, family, the best for us is still yet to come. Thank all of you, God bless you, and the Lord's will, God will get the victory. Thank you. And family, I want you to know that Sister August and I and our family have never led this church from the rear. Uh, we have already committed personally to $25,000 that we've already paid in the last two weeks. We wanted to make sure ours was in. Because we never ask, I never come to you as a pastor without having mine already on the table. And so the other thing I want you to know, and I want you to continue to make sure it's in your heart, the church will always belong to the people. The church can never be owned by a person or one family. It belongs to God's people. Amen? So let me pray for us right now as deacons you get prepared to come forward. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you for everything you've done. And God, yes, we're seeking oneness. We thank you for the miraculous work that you're doing between Bethel's family and Harvest Point. I thank you for the Scott family and the Harvest Point family. I thank you for Bethel's heart, God, just giving me the privilege, God, to lead this collaboration in this season. Thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness year in and year out. You're so faithful to us. Now, Father, as families and husbands and wives and grandparents begin to look at this challenge, God, they would see it as a challenge and not something that they just casually glance and look at. This is for all of us because our legacy, God, is built into what we're doing right now. So touch our hearts, God, to go up above and beyond what we think we can do we, because we're trusting in your love for us to bring all this to fruition. So even today, God, bless our giving up above and beyond in tithes and offering. And God, let these commitment cards come in, God, and let us talent, let us get to the goal, God. And then for the next 12 months, God, then people can give to fulfill that pledge purpose. We thank you, Lord, in advance for everything. And I pray that this message in this Sunday has been an encouraging word into the heart of your people. In Jesus' name we pray and we say amen. Amen. I'm going to ask our deacons to come forward. I'm going to let the Scott family and Sister Augusta, let's give the Scott family a hand. I de definitely wanted to put them back in your face. Come on. Come on, Greg. Well, you can handle yourself, brother. There you go. Uh oh, where are you going? Do you take care of mama yourself? And family, we got to always continue to portray family in front of families. Amen? Amen. And while the deacons are doing that, all the men, I need for you to uh, put on your calendar during spring break, the Lord's will. Uh, we're going to be doing some men and boys, more of a retreat with the men and the boys. But where we're going, we're going to Galveston. We're going to leave on Tuesday and Tuesday evening have some fun activities to get some bonding between father and sons. We also have a lot of young boys in our leadership academy that don't have dads, so we need men to step up on this particular uh, fishing retreat. And so Wednesday, they get a chance to go just about everywhere. 
Then Thursday morning, we're already in Galveston. We're going to get on a boat, and we're going to take the boys fishing. Many of them have never been fishing before. Amen. So you can contact Pastor Holman or Pastor Ford in youth ministry if you're in interested. There will be brochures that they've been passing out because we're going to be doing something with our young men because we, the church has always been the pillar to help with our young men. Uh, can I get some of those um, Lord's Supper things? Deacons, whenever you're ready, I'm ready. Thank you, sir. And family, I want you to know that on this coming Thursday, while this is going on, I'm going to create a Zoom. I want you to hear my heart. And, and, and the Zoom is going to actually be a blessing uh, for those in the insurance industry, uh, you in actually the legal business, or you in the funeral home business. I'm going to do a Zoom with all of them on one Zoom because I want to cast the vision to them and have them give, give us a proposal on how they can serve the body in a group weight versus every family individually going and do something. Brother Vic, I want you to come on down. Uh, attorney Vic Bonham, uh, personal attorney, has been very instrumental in helping families. He's already committed to helping us take care of our uh, Legacy Challenge 2023. And so he's going to share a few things before we go into partake in the Lord's Supper. And so this is attorney Vic Bonham. Some of you might know him, but we met him through the Black Heritage Society for the MLK Day Parade. And so he has uh, a few minutes to just share a few things as he partners with us to see this Legacy Challenge come to fruition. Good morning. Such a good-looking crowd of folks, and I'm glad to, to be here giving honor to God, uh, Pastor and his lovely wife. I first heard of you guys three weeks ago. I had never heard of this church in life. I mean, never, ever, ever. And when I heard about what you guys were doing out here, I made it my business to contact uh, Pastor August. told him I wanted to come out and talk to you like I'm doing now. And he said, well, Vic, before you do that, come out and meet me and let me show you around and you'll get a feel for us. So last Friday, I came out here, one o'clock, out here in time for lunch. And uh, pastor took time out of his busy schedule, sat down to talk to me, and we cut it up for about 30 or 40 minutes. And after we got through talking, he gave me uh, what I thought was going to be a five dollar tour of the campus here it turned out to be a hundred dollar tour i mean we went upstairs we went downstairs we went out by the loading dock i mean all the, we even walked through the dentist's office we did everything but play some basketball last friday i uh, enjoyed him i hope he enjoyed me and i told him i would be back i came in service last sunday just to get a feel for, you know, how you all do what you do on Sundays. And uh, being raised, having been raised in the church, I know good preaching when I hear it. And I'm here to tell you, you guys got a preacher's preacher out here. He is truly anointed. This is kingdom work he's doing out here. And the Lord is showing him the way. Last Sunday he was talking about asking God for wisdom. He has asked God for wisdom, and it's being manifested in what you all are doing out here now. And uh, at earlier service this morning, I asked him if I could participate in helping to redu uh, uh, reduce and eliminate the church's debt. And he said, well, sure, you can do that. So with that being said, and before I tell you what I really want to tell you, keep in mind that I'm a personal injury lawyer, automobile accidents, truck accidents, those kind of things, that's what I do. I do slip and falls too. Not here. <laughs> <laughs> Not here. But then, let, me, let, me, now, let me tell them I'm, 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 I'm barred from doing that. Now, let me but let, let me tell them something, Pastor. 
Let me tell you a little something about slip and falls. They're dangerous and they hurt. You know, Friday I was in my backyard. God was putting some lights up and I stumbled. And I did everything to keep from hitting that ground because I knew it was going to be hard. But my point to you is that, you know, get yourself together when you start getting ready to move around, all right? Put some movement in your legs because you do not want to hit that ground, okay? But again, what I want to say to you is that if you come to me and let me preserve and protect your interest, whatever I make, I'm going to pay tithes to this church. Now, that other lawyer you go to, he's not going to do that. And I could very well be wrong, but I guarantee you, Jim Adler ain't coming out here. <laughs> Them Christian lawyers, they ain't coming out here. Terry Brown, you go stand out there in the street for a whole week, you might turn white doing it, but he ain't coming out here. I'm making you the promise that I'm going to contribute to whatever's being done out here. I like what you're doing, Pastor. You are truly a man of God. And come see me. Take care of me. Support me. Let's do it 50-50. Huh? You know what I'm talking about. Teddy Pendergrass. <laughs> not 80-20, not 70-30. Let's do it 50-50. You support me. I guarantee you I'm going to support you. Thank you, Pastor. Yeah, and also, Brother Bonna, also, yeah, there you go. Steve, it's on. Is it on? Okay. To show you where my heart is, and I know that talk is cheap, all right? I believe in, you know, putting your money where your mouth is. By the way, not being a member, can I contribute to this legacy? You sure can. Well, I tell you, but with that being said, I got $5,000 for you. Yeah. And it's not a pledge and it's not an IOU. You can take it to the bank in the morning. <laughs> That's a blessing. Thank you so much. Sometimes you got people right in the house. You just got to go ahead and pardon with the right ones. But I will be on a Zoom at 8 o'clock on Thursday. Anybody in the insurance, the legal business, funeral home business, all they got to do is get in contact with me. I'll send them the link so I can share the vision for the church. Amen. Thank you all so very much for allowing us to share what the Lord is doing. Let's stand and prepare for the Lord's Supper. Miss Wendy Johnson, are you inside the church? Wendy? This is yours. Somebody had found that. You ready? Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that Chapter number 26, beginning there at the 26th verse. Jesus in the upper room, he tossed the bread to them. He said, take and eat, for this is my body. After giving thanks, he told them to take the cup and drink all of it, for this is my blood, which was shed for the many for the remissions of sin. And to him who is able, to keep us from falling. May the Holy Spirit and the sweet commune, may it rule, rest, and abide with all of us here until we all come together again. Let us all sing. Oh.
God bless you. Y'all take care of each other. To us, challenging, yes, but empowering always. Thank you so much again for tuning in. And ways to donate to this ministry, whether on Facebook, you can do it that way, or our text to give to our church. You can mail in your gifts, or you can just call the office and do it however you want to do it online. But either way, God bless all of you. Thank you for your support, and continue to share the messages that God is putting in our hearts. God bless you. We love you. Thank God. Bye-bye.